Hey there, this is Eric, and sorry it's been so long since I put out a video. Uh, it's a lot of different intervening situations, but I'm back and I thought I'd try my hand at uh, beginning with um, creating analysis videos of the upcoming propositions for the California ballots. Um, so the first one for right now, this video will be uh, talking about Proposition 14. I'll be putting out propositions about the subsequent ones, 15, all the way up to the end. So, uh, just stay tuned, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, and go from there. So, shall we go ahead and dive right in? Welcome back, and uh, let's go and take a look at Proposition 14. So, go ahead and look at the uh, screen. Give me uh, taking a screenshot of that so you can go and take a look, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, first of all, my notes on it. Uh, it's First of all, the whole point of it is it's going to create a bond, and what itself, what a bond is inherently, it is a loan. Basically, the state issues a bond to some investor, so it's an agreement for if the investor pays out so much money, the bond will repay the investor plus interest. So the state is already uh, getting your pockets twice over by creating this situation where they don't want to actually touch uh, the general fund which is actually behind all of this, but I'll get to that in a second. But uh, ask the, the taxpayer to dole out even more of their money, even though we're in a pandemic and money is extremely tight right now. And uh, trying to ask the taxpayer to pay out over the long term, uh, basically a double tax on their own money is kind of ridiculous. Now, that being said, oh, by the way, sorry if you can hear my children in the background, but uh, I'll try to keep it focus over here. Um, so basically, yeah, we're being asked to pay twice over for uh, stem cell research. Now, there's a bit of an issue with this because ultimately speaking, uh, what this actually goes to once you go into the law, which we will look at right now, The law itself, basically it's a lot of fluff at the beginning, saying why we, it's such an awesome thing to have all the stem cell research. And uh, if you go and take a look uh, over here at uh, section 2, and you know, go ahead and take a look at uh, right there on the video, on the split screen, uh, it goes into, uh, sorry, 2B, uh, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, or the CIRM. And uh, go ahead and take a look at it over here. Uh, have the main page, and um, with that, switch back over to the law. It is. It was established by I believe it was Proposition 71 in 2004, which you can actually go into the history, and I'll show you that right over here. It actually says it on their page, so that it created a situation where. Uh, by law, through Proposition 71, this institution was only supposed to be funded by, I believe it was a $3 billion uh, allotment from the general fund. So the state, the, you as a taxpayer are already paying for this stem cell research, which you would think, if it was so awesome, why does the taxpayer need to pay for this thing at all, that private companies, venture capitalists, whatever, be like, Great, get on board, medical research, what have you, because, you know, take all those advancements. But, that, that tend to make, I mean, California is obviously a very liberal state, and they for some reason always seem to think that the government needs to have its hands into everything. So, anyways, uh, but, continuing on. Uh, what this uh, institution does, what the CRM does, is that it provides grants 
So basically, it doesn't to do it does not do any research unto itself. It takes your money and then it funnels it over to different laboratories to do grant based work. To laboratories, whether it be university, private, nonprofit, whatever, to do the research onto this stem cell research. And uh, basically, it's like I said, funneling public money instead of private venture cap uh, capital. Now they may say that they're partnering up with private uh, with uh, private ventures, but honestly, like I said, if there was such a demand for this, why do they need to have a single penny of public money, especially during a pandemic, with uh, with how tight things are right now and the double the double tax through the bonds, you know, principal and interest. But anyways, continuing on. Um, from my own research onto this, uh, basically the whole law uh, is trying to fund this, and it'll actually, if I can pull it up, I believe it was um, during section three or four. Uh, here, here we go, and uh, it's. Yeah, over here in section four, the purpose of it is to, if you, if you look at your screen, that uh, to not touch the general fund because the governor, or whoever, doesn't want to buy, doesn't want to risk touching the general fund, so they're going to try to fund this kind of stuff through the extra uh, funding of asking you guys to open up your wallets more instead of the states actually being able to manage their own, you know, agreed upon promises, and but. One of the biggest things that threw me off was, uh, was if you look on the page, when it says that they fund different kinds of stem cell research, one of which is embryonic. That was a big flag to me, which is where you got the title of this versus taxpayer-funded abortion. Now, in itself, they will say on their own page that, that, no, embryo, uh, that no stem cells are derived from abortion. Well, the truth of that is kind of relative because who knows where these labs are getting their uh, their embryos. They say it's from IVF, I mean the in vitro fertilization facilities. Uh, it says that on their on the main page these are not aborted uh, embryos. Uh, they're fertilized, so they are actual babies. They're frozen, but they're babies uh, from from IVF. But they're still fertilized. The only difference is that because they, they, they technically don't call it an abortion because they were never implanted into a womb. But, like I said, we all know about all of the controversy surrounding Planned Parenthood and them selling uh, body parts of babies. We have no idea during that entire time period at what point uh, are they, do they gain access to uh, fetuses or whatever or during the time of implantation. Could it be of where they uh, where they uh, sell off parts of uh, uh, parts of embryos for research? We don't know, but it's a uh, but it's a generally a very big concern. But even if it is just through IVF, and that's a big if, they're deliberately taking babies that could have had a chance, destroying them because whenever you remove the implantation, whenever you remove the stem cells, the medical research shows it destroys the baby. And they say, well, this is through um, uh, this is through the consent of the donor. Well, in this case, the donor is the baby itself. They say the mother is the donor, but there's no adult stem cells being pulled from this. It's strictly embryonic. I mean, yes, the uh, CIRM does do adult stem cell research, and if the mother wants to allow harvesting her own cells of her own stem cells, more power to her. It's her body, but the baby is not given that choice. They they basically they treat the baby as a commodity, a living being, as something to be bought and sold. Hence, why everybody always keeps on throwing out the slavery, the the comparison of it, because they treat these babies, these living beings, these creations of God, as commodities to be created or destroyed at the whim of the mother. And because it's at the whim of the mother, it's also up to if she wants to sell it through this thing, through in virtual through in virtual field fertilization to a research laboratory for you know stem cell research so that's why it's may seem like a clickbait title when i say uh, taxpayer funded abortion but the very the very essence of abortion is the murder of a baby now granted 
the most well-known stuff is uh, surgical abortions where they're literally tearing apart babies in the womb. But the very core essence of what an abortion is, is the murder of a baby, the murder of a child. A fertilized egg in this case. Up in the embryo stage. So, trying to ask what is already being funded by the taxpayer to open up yet another bond, a bond measure, to further fund outside of the state's already agreed upon uh, requirements is kind of ridiculous and disgusting, really. And I mean, honestly, I wish they would just do away with the whole embryonic stem cell thing, but that's a, that'll be a fight in itself. But, continuing on, um, the, back in the, I believe, Section 3 it is, it became, um, this is primarily due to the fact, also, why they want to create the bond to begin with, is because the state ran, ran out of funding. Well, why did the state run out of funding? Or why is it having such a hard time? Thing? Well, during a pandemic, uh, the governor of the state, our illustrious Gavin Newsom, decided to say, hmm, I think that it might be a good idea to... Shut down uh, businesses across the state under the guise of protecting the population. They ordered businesses to shut down, and where's the biggest tax paying organization or entity within the state? Well, it's all small businesses. And we're getting, and we're getting all these businesses that are hemorrhaging uh, money right and left. They're not generating any tax revenue, which would have been filling up the state coffers to fulfill their own obligations to begin with. And so, basically, this becomes yet another. Uh, corpse on the pyre of the radically unwise economic decisions of the governor, who obviously, incidentally, was the first governor, I believe, in the world to begin the lockdowns, but another discussion. So, uh, for the purposes of this, I'm going to go back to my notes on this. Um, oh, yeah, several parts of the laws that it also creates other committees and bureaucracies to decide how to best spend the money for accountability purposes, but obviously you know very well that uh, the state has a, a, a wide history of creating committees and bureaucracies for the sole purpose of basically just uh, their their cronies, their friends, their buddies to get more benefits, get more pay during a pandemic of all times. And the, the, this smacks up a lot of issues. So I just honestly just say vote no. Oh no, all the way down on this one. Go ahead and then if you if you are a person who agrees with the idea of stem cell research, go ahead and then write a check off to a lab, a lab yourself without having to worry about it going from the government to the lab. Let's get rid of the CIRM completely. It's honestly it's, it's superfluous and it's basically picks and chooses where to send your money instead of going cover to core government services. But anyways, that's my take on it, and I hope this is helpful. Um, and I guess we'll see you around. Uh, God bless. And um, I guess that's about it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll go ahead and refer back to the uh, my notes if there are any questions. I think I'll go back on further. Uh, hopefully this will help you out in your voting. And uh, I'll see you over in uh, Proposition 15.